Did you ever act up when you were in school or are currently in school? I know you did. Don't lie, you naughty, naughty poop. But really, what was your punishment? Detention? A lower grade? Yeah, those things are extremely tame compared to the punishments that some schools have given out. Seriously, be grateful you never went to these institutions. Here are 10 schools that handed out ridiculous punishments. Number 10 is bringing the wrong lunch. In October of 2010, 17-year-old Ashley Smithwick arrived for class at Southern Lee High School in Sanford, North Carolina, only to find herself in big trouble for a little mistake. Upon arriving, school officials inspected her bag and found in her lunchbox that she was carrying a small green paring knife. The incident occurred after Ashley accidentally swapped lunchboxes with her father, Joe Smithwick, before leaving the house that morning. Mr. Smithwick kept the knife in his pail so he could cut up apples, but the officials claimed it was a weapon capable of hurting much more than just fruit. I'm a fruit ninja, I swear! They suspended Ashley for the remainder of her senior year year and she was officially charged with a misdemeanor, specifically the possession of a weapon on school grounds. Yeah, to anyone watching, if you're in school, just use your teeth. Teeth are not tools, but they're better than a knife. Number nine is being concerned about potassium. Apparently caring about someone's well-being is a suspendable offense. During a playoff soccer game at Bloomfield Hills High School in Michigan, senior Jay Cook was in the stands when he noticed a player on the opposite team was having a cramp. Cook, who plays football for Bloomfield Hills, recognized a potential cause for the boy's pain and called out, get that boy a banana. The thing is, officials thought the comment was racist, mostly due to the fact that the player was African American and actually suspended Cook from playing in the final football game of the year. Many students came forward saying Cook was not being racist, but knew that potassium would help the boys cramp. The district reversed the decision and dealt out an unexplained alternative discipline. I don't know what that was, but maybe they should have just made him eat lots of bananas as a punishment. Eat, eat boy, eat. Number eight is correcting the teacher. On April 20th, 1994, a boy identified only as Alex brought home a note to his mother from his teacher, Mr. Hilliker, explaining why he was going to have detention two days later. In the note, it was revealed that Alex was disruptive in class and kept insisting that Hilliker was wrong about a kilometer being longer than a mile. It went on to claim that every other student simply accepted the teacher's word for it, but Alex consistently defied Hilliker and kept correcting him. Alex was, of course, correct, as a mile is longer than a kilometer, but still he received detention for showing a blatant disrespect for authority and a complete lack of respect for his school. Apparently, just because a teacher is wrong at this school doesn't mean that the student has the right to correct him. Well, little do you know that this teacher was right, and also the sky is purple, and the earth is flat, and the entire universe revolves around earth. So, there's something for you. Number seven is having a green jolly rancher. When 10-year-old Leanne Adair was handed a Green Jolly Rancher while in class at Brazos Elementary School in Wallace, Texas in April of 2010, she had no idea how huge a rule she violated. The district was pushing for a reduction in junk food being consumed, and Jolly Ranchers are, of course, just that. Her teacher immediately took the unopened candy from the third grader, and despite the school not having any guidelines over punishing a student for breaking the no candy rule, issued a week-long detention for her. After she came home crying and explained the situation, Leanne's family quickly came to her aid, fighting with the school board over the ridiculousness of the punishment compared to the crime. Yeah, crime. Delicious candy crime. Unfortunately, the school officials upheld the punishment. Number six is Grandma's Cake. Hello, Sonny. Would you like a cookie, son? In 2009, 11-year-old Kaza Houghton chose to enter the running for fifth grade mayor at Leisure Elementary School in Newark, Delaware. To influence votes for her campaign, her grandmother sent her to school one day with a pair of cakes in order to share them with her classmates. 
However, in an innocent move along with the cake, plates, forks, and napkins, her grandmother had sent a knife to cut it up. Oh, we already know how this turns out. No knives in school, kids. The teacher cut up the cake, served all the students, and everyone seemed to enjoy it. But shortly after, the teacher turned the girl in for bringing a weapon to school. Hey man, that's like having your cake and eating it too. She was suspended, alarming her parents who got in touch with the local news station. After the bad press, the school scrambled to fix things and the suspension was lifted. Number five is a kiss on the hand. In early December of 2013, a six-year-old boy named Hunter Yelton was suspended from Lincoln School of Science and Technology in Canyon City, Colorado. But the reason for it had his mother up in arms. Was it a knife again? Let's find out. The incident behind the suspension involved Hunter kissing a six-year-old female classmate on the hand, a girl who he believed to be his girlfriend and whom allegedly had referred to him multiple times as her boyfriend. The peck was labeled by the school as sexual harassment, but after a short fight led by his mother, the label was changed to misconduct. The young boy's family has insisted the kiss on the hand was a consensual and innocent act, but the young girl's family strongly disagrees and Hunter found himself suspended for four days over it. Consent is important, friends, but it also kind of kills the mood when you're like, wait, can I kiss you? You have to write on this contract that says that I can kiss you. Also, can you record it on my phone so I have proof? Thanks. Number four is having a clock. On September 14th, 2015, a ninth grader with a love of science found himself hauled out of his school in handcuffs. Ahmed Muhammad, a 14-year-old student attending MacArthur High School in Irving, Texas, arrived to class ready and excited to show off his latest tinkering project, a digital clock he built all by himself. You can probably see where this is going. However, staff at the school mistakenly believed the teenager had brought in a bomb. They quickly called 911 and police arrived, soon after taking Ahmed into custody. After the incident, he was cleared of all charges but still received a three-day suspension. That's a long amount of time. <laughs> See, because he brought in a clock. <laughs> After the news hit the internet, the teen received tweets of support from a number of people, including Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg and then president of the United States, Barack Obama. Number three is carrying a leaf. On September 22, 2014, an unidentified 11-year-old boy began showing off a marijuana leaf to his classmates from the gifted and talented program at Bedford Middle School in Bedford, Virginia, before hiding it back in his backpack. After arriving for class, an assistant principal inspected his bag and found the leaf. The boy, who happens to be the son of two school teachers, was suspended and brought up on charges in the juvenile court system, much to his relative's shock. He was forced to enter an alternative education program and was faced with being homeschooled while also seeing a psychiatrist for substance abuse. However, after three separate tests revealed the leaf was not pot at all but a maple leaf, the charges were dropped. Sadly, the poor kid still has to change schools and was searched at the end of every day. Being a Canadian, I can tell you, eh, those maple leaves are trouble. Oh boy. Number two is potentially having Advil. Got a headache? Leave school! On October 8th, 2003, 13-year-old Savannah Redding, an 8th grader at Safford Middle School at Safford, Arizona, was pulled out of class and brought to the nurse's office. After arriving, Redding, an honor student at the school, was put through a strip search conducted by school officials who were looking for contraband, specifically of all things, ibuprofen. Vice Principal Carrie Wilson had caught a fellow student with the painkillers in her possession, a student who claimed Claimed Redding had given it to her. With only that statement to go on, Wilson pulled the teen out of class and ordered the search, which thoroughly embarrassed the teen. However, no drugs of any kind were found. Oh uh, yeah, because she gave him away and or sold him. Ah. The US Supreme Court later decided the search was a violation of Savannah's Fourth Amendment rights. And number one was saving a fellow student from an asthma attack. 
On January 19th, 2016, 15 year old Anthony Huelas was suspended from Gateway Middle School in Killen, Texas for a truly unbelievable reason. He attempted to save the life of a fellow classmate. During fifth period, a female student began coughing and gagging as if something was blocking her airway. The teacher sent an email to the school's nurse, but shortly after the young girl fell out of her chair and onto the floor, where she was continuing to wheeze and struggling to breathe. Side note, quick pause. If someone's choking, don't take the time to send an email and be like, you're choking, okay, let me email the authorities to see what I can do. The teacher told everyone to stay calm as she awaited a response to her email. Deciding that the idea was, um, oh, what do you call that, a bad idea? He decided that we ain't got no time to wait for no email. He scooped up the girl and carried her to the nurse's office, receiving a suspension because he walked out of class. Yeah, he defied the teacher and he got suspended. That's the world we live in, folks. Have a great day, doot, 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 doot.